Mm. So I, you know, Hack was a complex person. Hackworth, that's kind of his nickname. Everyone calls him Hack. Hack, Hack was a yeah. complex person. And I don't agree with everything that he says. I don't agree with everything that he does and or everything that he did. I don't worship the guy. Uh, and, you know, what's interesting about me questioning what his decisions and questioning his leadership is like, that's something I learned from him. Like, mm -hmm. don't even, don't listen to anybody 100%. Don't put, you know, you should always be questioning what people are saying and, and making sure and confirming it through other sources and other experiences that it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I always try to do with everything mm. is, is use that attitude. And so I, I, I don't, I don't recall. And I was actually trying to come in here tonight. I was trying to figure out when I got this book and I actually have no idea. I don't remember it. It like mm. appeared in my life at some point. <laughs> And sure. I don't know how, and no one ever made the recommendation to me. I just somehow ended up with it. Mm -hmm. And, but I got it, I, I got it before, one thing I do know is I got it before September 11th, 2001. When that happened, I had already read it. I already had it in my brain. Mm. But when I was in Ramadi in 2006, this, I, I, I literally read this book every night that I was not, out in the field. Mm -hmm. I read this book every night and you know, I just open it up. You could open up anywhere in that, in this book and you could find something, some, some piece of information, some similar situation, some lesson learned that you could take from it mm -hmm. and it could guide you. And, and you know, one of the, like, like for instance, and it, it all applied to what I was doing, the situation that I was in. So for instance, we were, in Iraq and we were supposed to be working with Iraqi soldiers who are unmotivated, poorly equipped, poorly trained, uneducated, bad morale, and that's, and, and corrupt. So they're, the money's all disappearing. It's, mm. it's a horrible situation. Mm -hmm. And what was Hackworth doing in Vietnam? Well, they were working with the South Vietnamese army who was corrupt and unmotivated and poorly mm -hmm. trained and all those same things. So they were dealing with the same things we were dealing with. And that's one example of many. Uh, I took a little break about three months into deployment. I took a little break and, and I'm not 100% sure why, but I found another book. Somebody had left a book mm. in our building and the book was Speaking of dichotomy, the book was The Electric Kool-Aid Acid Test by Tom Wolf. Mm. And I think at this point, I, you know, three months into deployment, I think I needed um, some kind of mental uh, escape, you know, mm. at least, you know, I was, I, was, I was like dealing with combat all day. And then I'd go in my room and read about combat mm. at night. And I kind of was like, okay, you need to think about something else for 20 minutes or 10 minutes mm. and just get out of, get, get it out of your head. Mm -hmm. And I randomly found this book. So I said, oh. And I had read The Right Stuff by Tom Wolfe, which was a fantastic book. And so I said, oh, this, I'm sure this will be interesting as well. So as I read this book, The Electric Kool-Aid Acid Test, which is about hippies and drugs and the 60s, and that's what it's about, hate Ashbury, the whole nine yards. And I, there's a quote in the middle that I actually pulled out because I'll never forget this quote and how this quote was so starkly contrasting with about face. Mm. And, and I'm going to read this quote and these, and, and I kind of forget the whole setup to it, but they're at some kind of a concert and there's all this screaming and craziness going on at some rock and roll concert. And, you know, he says, I couldn't hear what they were screaming either, but you don't have to. They're screaming me, 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 me. I'm me. That's the cry of the ego. And that's the cry of this rally, this concert. Me, 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 me. And that's why wars get fought. Ego. Because enough people want to scream, pay attention to me. And it was one of those things that I read and, I, and it was so stark different from the situation that I was in where I was with these guys in my own task unit, the SEALs in my task unit, the Marines that were there on the ground with us, the Army soldiers that were down on the ground with us. And these guys were all so selfless. 
the last thing they cared in the world about was me, 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 me. Mm -hmm. And I got done with that book and I went right back to About Face because I, I related to it. I understood and I, I said to myself, this is true. This is selfless. This is where I'm at right now. Yeah. So I went back into About Face and I continued. And, and eventually this book is the, the one book that I've given to a few of the guys that worked closely for me. Uh, including, including Leif. Leif Babin, who, you know, one of my brothers who wrote Extreme Ownership with me and he's one of the guys that you know he's got he's got his copy and it's all dog-eared and marked up because it's a great book yeah 